In today's video, is missing a meal bad for your metabolism? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravello from ProPhysique.com and we're here in Las Vegas. Hold on. There's the proof. But the cool thing is we're here with the smartest guy I know uh, when it comes to nutrition and probably a lot of other things. This is Dr. Joe Kornesky. I know So Joe is out here for the Olympia for the first time ever. Blows my mind that you're here for the first time ever. But uh, it's also his birthday, so we're going to have a little fun this weekend. But since I got you here, I like to answer questions on my Instagram direct message. So what we're going to do is uh, we both looked at the question that came in regarding missing meals. Um, so I'd like to get your thoughts on how missing a meal might impact your metabolism, good, bad, or perhaps, like he said, your gains. Yes. Right. So, so the question was, if I miss meals, is that going to negatively impact my metabolism? And then what are the uh, ramifications for muscle gain, muscle maintenance, all that? And this is one of those questions that I have to preface that we could talk about it for an hour because there are so many variables. But you know, the very first part of the answer is yes, every time you eat, it increases your metabolism. But there's a finite amount of food you can digest and assimilate without storing body fat. So if you eat more food at one time, you'll have a bigger impact on your metabolism, but then you get into fat storage. So you're always looking for that sweet spot of if I keep my meals very small and frequent or have these larger ones, you know, which is going to have the better anabolic and metabolic impact. And that debate is still going on. Okay. Uh, obviously, we still have the intermittent fasting craze, time-restricted eating craze. So people who are in favor of those kinds of eating as they are today, they would have been laughed at 20 years ago. It, it would have been right. anathema and stupid to go hours and hours without eating. So, you know, there are really pros and cons on both sides, and it depends on your overall status. Are you in a massive calorie deficit? Uh, are you at 10% body fat or 20% body fat? What are your genetics like? I mean, there's, there's no way to answer that question very specifically. So my thought is, if your calories are the same for any given day, it's gonna impact your metabolism the same. It doesn't really matter how you break up the meals, unless maybe there's an extreme case, like you said, where you're eating 10,000 calories in a sitting, but if someone misses a meal and then makes it up by adding calories later in the day or the next day, would that kind of there, equate? There is more evidence for that. If you look at how, if you're eating maybe three meals versus four or four meals versus six, you're right. There's not that much impact. I don't think, especially over a long-term study or long-term right. uh, time frame, you would find any difference at all. But if right. you go to those extremes, if you're eating once or twice a day or dropping your calories by a thousand day to day, I think then you're going to see there are there is some research that shows that it almost creates a micro yo-yo effect, right. which can start suppressing your metabolism. Okay. So when I looked at this guy's picture, I, I noticed that he looked like a physique competitor. I saw some leanness to him. So one thing I'll say is that the one thing you want to pay attention to is your performance. So if you miss a meal and you start to notice that your performance is bad, whether that be during cardio or during training that's probably gonna have a bigger impact on your overall look and feel of your physique versus if you move some meals around during the day. I don't think it's gonna negatively impact your metabolism if you, if you miss a meal, right? As long as you're making up for those calories somewhere else in the day. Um, any other thoughts on, like, I guess since he's a physique competitor, what your thoughts are on the importance of meal timing? Yeah, it, that's exactly where I was gonna go because I think if you really look at your overall day, you can get the best of both worlds. You could say, well, you know, during this time of my day, because I just trained, I really need to have two or three meals pretty close together because of just increasing metabolic activity. But then later in the day, you might have a larger meal and you go four or five hours without eating. I, I just interviewed a world record holding power lifter who is a uh, female over 50, pretty ectomorphic, and she loves to do kind of an intermittent fasting type diet, but she even made the statement when I'm going to a meet and training my hardest, of course I would make sure I'm fed, even yeah. though that's not her daily okay. uh, you know, MO. It's just easier for her to maintain her lifestyle using that Yeah, approach. but then when it comes down to performance, it's right. having the food you need when you need it, even yeah. if it's not always just synchronized perfectly. Yeah, and, and, and Joe is a pro-natural bodybuilder as well, and one thing that I always feel as, as I diet down is the leaner I get, there's an inverse relationship to the importance of meal timing. like. 
when I've got a little bit of body fat, I can go longer without eating and I can train and be fine. But when I, the leaner I get, if I don't eat in that three, four, or five hour window, my energy levels really start to dip and that's when I can start to notice an, an issue. 100% agree. So yeah, set up yourself for success. Don't beat yourself up if you miss a meal or two here or there. Uh, look for opportunities to solve that problem in the future going forward if you're worried about it. And now the air conditioner just shut off and you can really hear us well. But I'm at the Olympia and you guys are getting a video. So say thank you and to Dr. Joe for being on my video. All right, guys, have a great day and I'll talk to you tomorrow.